friends. Today we are going to cover more miles than we've ever done before, and that's saying something. We're going to visit eight historic Russian cities that are full of medieval churches and a whole lot more. Don't worry, there's plenty to the Golden Ring besides just hours of church footage, although the churches are pretty darn nice, especially those in our start location of Sergiev Pasad, the unofficial church capital of Russia. Hello friends and welcome to Russia Tips, Tricks and Travel Winter Road Trip Edition. The boys and I are going all over Russia's gold ring to show you all the cool stuff that's there. We're starting off in Sergeyev Passad, which you may remember because we filmed a whole video about it. So I'm not going to spend too much time here, but if you remember, it's sort of the religious church capital of Russia. And to be honest, the whole golden ring is known for its churches, but don't worry. In these videos, we're not going to show you only churches, but there's definitely going to be a lot of churches. Anyways, let's go. Boom. I have been to Sergeyev Passad many times before. In fact, we were here just last fall on St. Sergius's Day, and it was like a rock concert. There were so many people here. In the middle of winter, things are a lot uh, slower, that's for sure. Okay, so it's time to get going on our big journey. And before we get started, let's find out just what the heck this whole golden ring thing even is. So apparently in the Soviet Union, someone created this idea of a golden ring of medieval cities as a tourist route. Basically, they wanted a way to attract people to some of the older, smaller cities in the country. This idea turned out to be a big hit, and ever since, there's been a bitter fight to either get on the list or remain on the list as it attracts thousands and thousands of tourists to those towns every year. And so leaving Sergeyev Passad, we are headed for Pereslavl Zaleski. Yulia, our main producer, asked me to try to get as many people in the frame as we could and try to talk to people, you know, get that human element in the video. At a monastery in the middle of winter, there's not a lot of people. There's one dog, though. Hi, dog. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yulia, my dear, I'm sorry, but there's nobody here either. Pereslav Zaleski was founded all the way back in 1152 by the famous prince Yuri Dolgoruki as a capital for what was then the Northeast. The city today is tiny, which is great for tourism with plenty of lovely architecture to enjoy as you walk around. It retains the old school character of a medieval Russian city, with most of the buildings being just one or two stories tall. This is one site where you literally can see everything, so why not try? In fact, get ready for a big dose of orthodoxy here, because in this tiny town, there are five separate monasteries. Five! So you see that church behind me? Not only is it cool that it survived since the 12th century, but it's also the place where great Russian hero Alexander Nevsky was baptized. He went on to do great things. If they ever put people back on the money, he should be on the 100 ruble bill for sure. Next stop, Rostov Veliki. Not to be confused with Rostov Van Don, which it often is, this Rostov Veliki, i.e. Rostov the Great, is way farther to the north and way, way colder. The city is located next to a massive calm lake that would be perfect to walk along in summer. In the middle of winter, it's a smidge chilly by the water, to be honest. There seem to be a lot of hotels and tourist markets, so in summer, I bet the place really does come to life. The Kremlin here is certainly one of, if not the most grand in Russia. The unique thing about this Kremlin is that it was designed for style, not efficiency, as it was constructed way too late to ever serve as a real practical fortress. Oh guys, I'm having kind of a spiritual experience here, not just because of all the churches all over the place. Here in the Kremlin of Rostov Veliki, they filmed a movie that literally every person who's ever learned Russian as a second language has watched. It's called uh, Ivan Vasilievich Changes Professions, and like every scene from the old school parts of the movie was filmed right here. In fact, uh, do, you, do you guys remember the scene with those bells? I do. <laughs> Guys, check out that mural. I mean, I think the wear and tear even in some ways makes it more beautiful. That's an original medieval work right there. That is awesome. Awesome in the original sense of the word. Yeah. And so we're making our way to the heart of the Golden Ring, to the big city of Yaroslavl, 
Perhaps there'll be something cool there to see besides churches and monasteries. Who knows? Well, so anyways, guys, here we are in Yaroslavl, the biggest, most populated point on Russia's golden ring. And when Misha and I were sort of working out this idea of what this winter adventure would be like, you know, it had been minus 25 for a whole month. So we assumed there'd be snow and people playing in a frozen river filled with people fishing and it'd be great. But as soon as we got here, it's been plus temperatures. So I'm just standing in puddles of water. It's kind of gross. And the wind is so strong, it's actually blowing me in the back out of frame. Lovely. So anyways guys, although the weather's been a little bit disappointing, the nice part about Yaroslavl is because there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of things to see, especially different architecture. It's not all churches. Like right behind me here, we have a little bit of a Tsarist bureaucracy. Uh, and as we turn even more, you'll see uh, some Soviet architecture. It still has the nice hammers and sickles all over it. Uh, and not just that, there's more cafes, more activity, and more life here, which is kind of cool. In fact, last night before I went to bed, I had a very, very good pizza right over there. Yum, yum. So yeah, looking at this building, it reminds me that in, uh, in Russia, the sort of uh, stereotype of the grayness of Russian cities really came from the Soviet period, because during the Tsarist times, any government or like rich guy's house was always pastel colors. Some sort of pastel yellow. Here we have kind of more of an orangish down there. And uh, even poor Russians themselves tried to paint their homes as bright green or blue as they possibly could, you know, because uh, uh, otherwise things are kind of gray here in Russia. So uh, locals really appreciate having very colorful buildings, at least in the past. Yaroslavl is the titan of the Golden Ring, being a major city that is way too big to be walkable as there are half a million people there. Rostov Veliki, for example, only has about 30,000. This is a great place to go if you want to see what life is like for average Russians outside of Moscow, as Yaroslavl is very typical of these, quote, second tier cities. There are tons of great hotels here and cafes for those of you who are a little less adventurous on vacation. Since the city is a regional capital, it got a lot more attention during the Soviet period, so the city has a much more solid appearance, as our director Misha would say. Oh, I haven't been here in ages, so it was so nice to walk around downtown during the daylight and actually see everything for once. The weather did kind of stink while we were there, but I still had fun. Remember, if you cannot deal with bad weather, then you uh, just can't deal with Russia at all. And remember guys, sometimes these filming days can be very intense. I had a blast just getting a local pizza off camera, watching some news on the TV and chatting with the waitresses. Good time. As you guys know, I like my architecture. And in a previous video, I pointed out that there's these interesting sort of arches that go to nowhere, but this is by far the biggest one I've seen. Usually they're only, I don't know, meter, meter and a half. This is like four meters wide. That is impressive. Well, we're at the halfway point of our journey and we're at yet another monastery. I'm starting to notice a lot of overlap between locations. Anyways, the question is, on our journey around the uh, Golden Ring, are we gonna be able to find just one city that doesn't have a monastery? Place your bets now. One thing that was a big surprise for me while we were touring the Golden Ring was that we found a miniature simulation of it right in Yaroslavl. This big model setup was very neat. As someone who always had an appreciation for Warhammer, seeing all this model terrain warmed my heart. And best of all, I could see all the little places on the Golden Ring that were along our journey. Everything was immediately recognizable, and they put all sorts of little secrets and details all over the models. Very cool and very heartwarming. Guys, this has to be my favorite part. The little Amonsi are dealing with the protesters there. That is hilarious. I can't believe they included that. <laughs> so this says Kastrama. Now it says Kastrama. And uh, they said that because it's where Snigurichka is apparently born, the fantasy character, that <laughs> all the way from here to there is all in snow because of her. Very cute. I like that. So we have traveled halfway around the Golden Ring. Kastrama, Ivanova, Suzdal, and Vladimir await us. But there is one place off route that yielded the best footage of all by far. We'll get to that mystery location in our second series about travel around the Golden Ring. So please stay tuned. Hey look guys, it's the official van of the Communist Party. Glory to communism! 